I'm David Guas, chef owner of Bayou Bakery in Arlington, Virginia. And today on Dude Food, we're talking about biscuits and gravy. We're gonna start off by rendering some of our ham. We've got a great country ham. We've diced it about a quarter inch, half inch. Good salty smoked ham, that's what we're going for. It takes a few minutes to render, so we're gonna get this started first and then we'll jump over to banging out our biscuits. We've got a nice cast iron pan. You can feel the heat coming off of it already. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add our country ham to it. So we're gonna render this off till some of the juices come out, some of the fats rendered out. We'll remove it from the pan, and then we'll go ahead and continue making our gravy. But in the meantime, we're gonna jump over to the biscuits while this is going. Now one of the most important things to make in biscuits is the flour you use. This is white lily flour. It's a soft wheat flour, so it's a completely different type of uh, wheat that's used in making this flour. It's going to render and yield a wonderful, delicate, flaky biscuit. So we're going to start by adding our flour to the food processor. Um, we even go a step further at the restaurant and we actually chill our flour. So as cold as we can make this mixture in the, while we cut the fat into it, the better. A little bit of kosher salt and then our baking powder, which is going to be our leavening agent. So this is diced, uh, again, about a half inch, uh, square cubed, been pre-chilled, cut it cold, keep it cold. We're going to add all of this to the food processor. Go ahead and get it locked and loaded. So we're going to go ahead and pulse this just a few times. The final product, we really want it to be almost like a small pea. Uh, in texture, the butter. So just cut it down a few times. You can also do this by hand if you don't have a food processor. So putting everything in the bowl and using a fork and going old school on it is a way to do it as well. So just a few pulses. We're going to finalize the texture by checking it ahead of time. Still needs a couple more pulses. So at this point, check it a final time. Great texture. Again, we talked about the, the butter being about the size of a pea. This is rendering up really nicely. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add our base to our bowl. At this point, we're going to add our buttermilk. I like doing this by hand for many reasons. You can really tell the texture as you're adding to it. Once you've added too much buttermilk, there's really no way of going back. So we're just going to sort of pour this in. Remember to leave a little bit of the buttermilk for your uh, brushing before you add uh, the biscuits to the oven. And I'm going to sort of take my fingers and just sort of rake in the buttermilk. Again, you don't want to overmix this. You don't want to become tough and hard. Nobody likes a tough and hard biscuit. So you can see how it starts to come together, and we're just sort of folding it around until it just brings itself into one. So we're there. I'm going to go ahead and dust our surface, a little bit of dusting flour. Again, it's important to use the same type of flour that you use in the recipe for the dusting of the surface. So we'll throw out our white lily. And then we'll just bring this dough right out to our surface. And at this point, we're just going to sort of coddle it and bring it together. You don't want to sit there and knead it like you would traditionally for like a bread. And once we've sort of packed it down and we've got the right shape, we're going to gently roll it out to about an inch, inch and a half thick. And again, just keeping the integrity nice and even and balanced so you can get a good yield on your punching of the biscuits. You can use a standard cookie cutter, or you can go old school with a nice mason jar, which I prefer to do. Just sort of rolling the, the ridge of the glass into the flour and punching out your biscuit. And we're going to go shoulder to shoulder on these guys. You really want them to touch. That's going to help with the final baking process. And when I say shoulder to shoulder, I, I literally mean you want the biscuits to be touching each other. 
They're side by side like nice, perfect little southern soldiers. You can hear that gasp of the air as you punch down the mason jar. It actually helps to release it so you're not having to dredge too much flour around the rim of the jar. It's a little music going on. This is uh, something pretty special between the, the popping sound of the mason jar and the swirling of the flour. It's quite magical. So we got the last little bit here. We can probably form another biscuit out of there. That's our test biscuit, our baby biscuit. We'll be able to sample that when it comes out if it's not perfect. At this point, right before we go into the oven, we've got our oven set at 400 degrees. We're going to brush this with our leftover buttermilk. And this just gives that nice sort of tang sharpness, that lemony kind of bite, that sourness. It's also going to really help to achieve a beautiful color when these biscuits come out of the oven. Now they're ready for the oven. Now it's time to come back and bring our attention to our gravy. We've got our ham, it's all rendered out. You can see a nice glistening in the pan. That means some of that fat came out. We're gonna go ahead and remove all this beautiful dice rendered country ham out. And then we'll go ahead and finish up this gravy quickly. We're gonna add our onions and our butter. Nice sweet onion varietal. I prefer Vidalia's, but if you can't get Vidalia's, Maui, any kind of sort of sweet onion. Um, just going to really sort of lend itself to the saltiness and the smokiness of that pork flavor from the ham. You can see how they've quickly caramelized and just sort of rendered out. A lot of that color is not coming necessarily from the onions themselves, but from that, the leftover ham particles that we have in that cast iron pan. We're getting close. We're going to actually add our ham back to the pan. A lot of people don't understand that extra step and why we separate it, but there's a reason. So it's really about building layers of flavor. You're really locking in juices by caramelizing the ham ahead of time, and it's really an important step. At this point, we're going to sprinkle in our uh, thickening agent, which is just good old flour. You use all purpose is fine. A little at a time, let it sort of catch up and coat the meat and the onions. Go ahead and add the rest of that flour. And don't fret if it looks a little dry. It just all depends on how long you rendered your ham out and what kind of uh, sort of fat that the actual ham had that you had to start with. At this point, though, now that the flour is fully incorporated, you can see it's sort of coating each sort of piece of onion and each piece of ham. We're going to go ahead and slowly add our milk a little bit at a time, just like making a bechamel or any kind of roux. You want to go slow at first and let it sort of catch up. The smells are outrageous right now. You can just see it all coming together. You'll see how quickly it thickens. You know, you can lower your heat at this point. You don't want to go too fast. Add a little bit more of our milk now. And again, you know, adding a little bit at each time is going to really help to temper it out so you're not bombarding it. You don't want to have clumps of that flour. You know, if we just sit, sat there and dumped all our milk in there, you can overcrowd it and uh, not allow it to sort of thicken in different stages. So really now we've got this extra milk, we're really just working on the final consistency. I'm going to go ahead and taste it. Now remember, depending on what type of protein you use, uh, the country ham is going to bring out a lot of salt. That's why you don't want to add a tremendous amount of salt to begin with, because obviously salt is something you can't take out. We're going to hit with a little bit of hot sauce. Just that the vinegar and the acidity of the hot sauce and a little, little heat is really going to balance out that salty, smoky flavor. Now we are going to add a little bit of salt. And again, I invite you to hold back as long as you can. A little bit of cracked black pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit more hot sauce. A lot of people ask you, is it too spicy? Is it too hot? Uh, how spicy should you get it? It's very personal. That's why you should add a little bit at a time. Or just put it on the table as a finished condiment and let everybody else decide what's right for them. But here on Dude Food, we're talking about food that I like to eat. And I'm going to bring it to the level that I like to eat it. So at this point, our consistency is there. We're going to reserve this off to the side. We're going to check on our biscuits, clean up a little bit, and then we're ready to plate. It's been 20 to 25 minutes. I can smell the biscuits. Our gravy's finished. Let's pull the biscuits out.
great color. Exactly what we want, a nice little rise. We're gonna brush it with a little bit of unsalted butter. That's just for added flavor. Cut them open. Plate some of these up. Smother it with a little bit of our gravy. Oh my word. <laughs> Wow, talk about super sexy, how that just sort of coats there. It's not too thick, it's got a nice run to it. It's not wet like, like a straight milk. A Little bit of green onion for garnish. You can use chive if you prefer. There you have our country ham gravy over biscuits, and that's how it's done. I'm David Guas, this is Dude Food. Don't forget to subscribe. Join us for a coffee run, Why Would You Eat That Style, with mouths full of rotten shark meat and a Brennavin chaser. Sustainably raised, low in fat, and loaded with protein. Here's a snack you can feel good about, scorpions. What do you get when you combine Mexican tamales with Cajun flavoring? A Louisiana-style foodgasm. What happens when you make a cupcake out of chocolate chip cookie dough and stuff it with Oreo cookies and peanut butter? No, 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 don't answer. Just click. Subscribe to Taste It for more free treats.